Colorado taxpayers had a tiny little role in trying to overthrow American democracy. Exciting stuff for all of us who have never participated in a coup against America before. But it turns out we were all paying for the time and the email account of the University of Colorado visiting conservative scholar John Eastman. Time and email that Eastman used to lay out how to overturn the presidential election. Those CU emails have now been sent to congressional investigators and to our politics guy, Marshall Zellinger. Emails from John Eastman's CU email address have been turned over to the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Those emails were obtained by the group Colorado Ethics Institute through an open records request and sent to the commission. Eastman, who was in D.C. and spoke at the rally ahead of the Capitol attack, used his CU email to reply to questions sent to him by Republican Pennsylvania state lawmaker Russ Diamond. Diamond wrote, numerous other frustrated colleagues and I are searching for legislative solutions to our current national predicament. That national predicament was that Pennsylvania voters selected Joe Biden as president. But Diamond wanted to give that state legislature power to appoint presidential electors for Trump. One of Eastman's replies from December 2020 included the suggestion, why not just assert the right to appoint an alternate slate of electors and have them meet and vote on Monday as well? I asked Eastman about these emails in a phone call today. I wasn't even aware that I had used the Colorado email. But somebody obviously reached out to me uh, using that email, and I just hit reply. Look, I'm a constitutional expert. The, fact, the notion that a, a legislator would reach out to me seeking my input on a key constitutional issue is not a surprise and well within my normal academic duties. Eastman was also one of Trump's former lawyers who filed a motion to the Supreme Court one month after the 2020 election. That motion was to let Trump intervene in a lawsuit that was attempting to block Biden electors in four states, including Pennsylvania. The same day as that court filing, Eastman sent an email to CU from his Chapman University email saying, President Trump asked me to represent him. Nothing on the pleading mentions CU, but I wanted to give you a heads up anyway. Eastman told me his legal work at that time was unpaid and he did not need to notify CU but did nonetheless. Because it was going to be newsworthy and you know these things had become intensely politicized and therefore controversial and so I wanted them to be aware of it before they got blindsided. I was volunteering for this effort. That's an exercise of First Amendment political rights and I was doing it on my own time so there was no reason for me to have sought their permission or given them notice questions for CU today. Uh, one of them was when did it know Eastman was working on behalf of President Trump? That email that I referenced in that story was the first notice outside of social media and news articles a little earlier that same day. I also asked if the university was aware of these specific emails to the Pennsylvania lawmaker on advising on how to overturn an election and a spokesman at the university tells me they were not aware until someone filed the open records request to get them and then sent them to the committee. I love that Eastman's rationale is like, well, yeah, of course. I mean, if you want to overthrow American democracy and you need legal justification, I'm your guy. On the phone, he compared it to any other faculty member responding to a question about their expertise. Yeah, yeah, like spotted frogs in the Amazon or how to overthrow American democracy, Google search. Yeah, all right, Marshall, thank you.